I can remember way, way back how difficult I found layer masks in the early days of working with Photoshop. I couldn't even find a decent 3D graphic on the internet just to show what a layer mask is all about, so I made my own here. What is a layer mask? Well, it's your background image with some form of adjustment above it, and it's either hidden or revealed using the paintbrush tool on a linked mask using the black and white from the color palette. Think of the mask as the whole of your adjustment and the white areas just allow that adjustment to project through onto your original image. I've got four very simple examples here for you just to get you going. Hi, I'm Tony Bramley. I've been a professional photographer for over 25 years. I help people just like you with my one-to-one -one training and group workshops. I provide judging for camera clubs and also, like you, shoot just for fun. Join me as I pass on a few wise words and probably some stupid ones too in a creative world called photography. So here I have an old rusting car from Route 66 and we're gonna work on three or four adjustment layers and masks just to get you confident on what masks and layers are all about. Here is my own personal layout. I've got layers here and then colors. Adjustments over on the left hand side if you need to open up any of these palettes, just go up to View and then down to Studio and you can tick whatever you need to be open. We'll start with sharpening this area of the light fitting here as well as some of this chrome as well. And we're just going to do this selectively using a mask. So with the background layer selected, we're going to duplicate that. The shortcut on the keyboard is Command or Control if it's Windows J and that produced a duplicate pixel layer here of the background. So we will go up to Filters, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and then we can work the radius and the factor just to get a little bit of sharpening that's needed. Now don't overdo this. Um, for this particular video, I will actually overdo it so you can see the result of painting in, but really keep this to a minimum and question whether you need it at all anyway. So radius I'm going to bring up and the factor just so we can really see that quite well. But normally work at 100%, so if you press Command or Control Plus, go up to 100% here and always work with sharpening at 100%. So just come back out there, we'll keep that as it is. Click Apply and we'll go down to a mask layer here. And before I click on it, I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard and that will bring it in inverted as black. So there's the mask. To bring the brush into play with a keyboard, we'll click on B. And we can also change the size of the brush with the bracket keys. Make sure we're on 100% opacity. For this, I'm gonna go with 100% flow and the hardness, I always keep at zero for a lot of this work, uh, unless I'm doing detail. So I want a high feather and that will help just blend things in at the edges. So I'm not gonna spend lots of time on this, just gonna go around and sharpen where I think it may need it. And work over on this chrome using the bracket keys if you need to, just to go a bit bigger or smaller, depending on where you're working. And you can see on the mask here, the white paint is coming through and showing you what you're doing. And this is revealing the sharpening area of the duplicate background layer. And we can turn that off and on just to check what the effect is like. So hopefully you are seeing this on this particular video, but don't do it as harsh as this normally. And we can right click and collapse the selection to have that as one single layer there. So let's look at a HSL adjustment layer and we'll mask that as well. And we'll take a look at this red area here. So, you know, a couple of weak areas really, this is quite a bright point down here. And you could say that maybe this red is a little bit strong and would work better maybe as an orange. So we'll turn this area here to orange. We go up to HSL. Now there is a default setting and there usually is some extras here 
as well on some of these um, adjustment layers, but you can also make your own presets. So we'll go with default. Here's where you can add a preset. So once you've done some changes, you can click add preset and give that a name. And that will come in as a new preset under HSL for you. Let's go back to default. Now as we're working on reds, we can click on the red field here just to adjust the reds or you can use the color picker here and then just drag in the area that you're looking at and you will see that these points along the color wheel here will start to select where you'll be working in that color range. And you can also adjust these manually as well. If you just want to narrow that range down. So let's find orange. So there's the orange coming in here and we'll try and get rid of this yellow here as well just by using these pointers. So we're just narrowing things down a little bit here. So that's going to blend a lot better. So it comes in with a white mask, we're going to invert that using Command or Control I on the keyboard. And now we can come down here, make sure we've got brush selected. And you will see a preview of the orange coming through underneath the brush. So let's just paint that in. You can see you can actually work with some images quite roughly. If you need to go down to detailing, then I do tend to take the hardness up a little bit more. So, you know, I can just work on edges where I need it, but I still have some feather going on. I don't usually work with hard edges. And it's a bit like working under the enlarger from the old days. Turn it off and on just to check your work. And that's more or less done now. Let's try another one. We'll go this time with contrast. And bring in default contrast. And we'll just punch that up. We'll just work on the, the bonnet here and the hood, I guess, for my friends in America. Let's push that just a little bit more. So it's a white mask as it comes in. We're going to invert that, Command or Control I. And then make sure we've got a brush. Extend the edges of the brush. And we'll just loosely paint that in over the hood. You can see the brushwork coming through here. And if you tend to overpaint anything, we can just invert the color palette by pressing X on the keyboard. And then we can go back and just work along the edges where we've overpainted. And turn that off and on. And just check your work. Now I don't use a red mask coming through or any color mask kind of like 99% of the time. I just want to look visually at how things are looking. And if I've got any worries, I will go in a little bit closer just to see what's happening. And all I'm looking for is a, a smooth transition in this work. So there's contrast. Now the other option I'll just show you quickly and we'll take a look at a curves contrast coming in. So we go down to curves, that comes in as a default, so a straight curve. We'll just put in a shallow S, maybe punch it over a little bit just to get that contrast going high. And again, it's a white mask, so we're going to invert that, Command or Control I. Make sure we have a brush. And now we can again, just like before, we can selectively brush that contrast in wherever we need it. Just turning it off and on to check that. So 
So there's four very quick examples for you using the adjustment layers as well as um, masks on a pixel layer there for you. Brushing in and out with the black and white just to get the effect that you need. What you'll find is in time you'll become very proficient with these very powerful tools to enhance your photographs.